Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. A while ago, I thrifted three gorgeous vintage bedspreads from Goodwill. Unfortunately, being twin size, I never really had a use for them, so they kind of sat in my closet for way too long. I love the fabric and I figured why not upcycle these bedspreads into something that I could actually use every day. So today I'm going to show you how to make a duster using another thrifted garment as a pattern. So stay tuned. So for this duster design, I really want to incorporate this wonderful fringe. I mean, come on, look at this stuff. They just don't even make things like this anymore. So I'm going to run the fringe along the bottom of my duster and I might actually use it around the cuffs of the sleeve as well. So let's just see kind of how this lays out. But first, I'm going to show you how you can deconstruct a different garment to use as kind of a rough pattern. I'm going to use this dress. It's a bit of a tunic dress to kind of imitate the shape of the duster that I want to make. Now, I need to make this into a jacket. So what I'm going to do is start by just cutting it simply straight up the middle. So when you're deconstructing a garment to use as a pattern, there's just a couple things that you have to keep in mind. One being your seam allowance. That's really important because different fabrics are going to have different seam allowances. This is a really thin fabric, so you can see the seam is a lot smaller than what I'm going to have on this heavier weight bedspread. So I'm going to give myself just a little bit of extra to take that into consideration. The way that I'm doing this is I also bought a garment that is a little bit bigger than I would normally wear and that's going to give me some extra fabric to work with. So now that I've got the garment open, kind of like a jacket, I'm going to show you guys how this fits. Okay, so the sleeves are a little bit short, but that's okay because I'm planning on putting some fringe around the bottom. but. Other than that, I think it feels pretty good. I like how this design has a separate bottom piece that gives it a little extra fullness. You can see how it's gathered and tucked kind of along where it meets the bodice. So I'm going to imitate that in my design just so I can get a little bit of a fuller cut on this jacket. Once I have it in the jacket shape, I'm gonna go ahead and deconstruct the rest of the dress. There are a few different ways to do this. I just happened to misplace my seam ripper. I have no idea where in the studio that thing went. Lucky for me, I do have some razor blades. I've used these before. Just be really careful if you're using a razor blade. It's super easy to cut yourself. I tend to like using a razor blade on a heavier piece of fabric, but this piece is a little bit lightweight, so Let's see if we can make it work. I'm gonna start by taking the bottom off of the tunic. You can see how this kind of has some ruching along the top, and that's what gives you the extra fullness in the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna actually mimic that when we recreate this tunic. After I have the bottom off, I'm also going to remove the sleeves and take apart the bodice. The bodice is the top part of the dress where the bottom meets the top and what attaches to the sleeves. I got myself a cup of coffee. I'm gonna go ahead and just work on deconstructing this garment and I'll show you what it looks like once it's all taken apart. So I've got my pattern piece taken apart and I'm just going to go ahead and lay everything out and press it so it's nice and flat. You can see this was the bottom that I've taken out the ruching, but it's still a little bit wrinkled. I'm just gonna press that so it lays nice and flat. And then here are my front bodice pieces. I'm going to press those as well. And then I'm gonna lay out the pattern. I just want to make sure that all of my patterning lines up really nicely in the spots where the pieces meet. So that would be at the top of the shoulder where it lines up with the back, 
We just want to make sure that everything is centered and laid out really nicely. So to do that, it helps if your fabric is pressed flat. I've got my iron warming up. I'm going to show you how to lay out these pattern pieces. With a fabric like this, there's also a front and a back. Most of the time with the weave, you can't really tell too much of a difference. It's just going to be a reversed coloring, but you can also tell just with the stitching, it's more detailed on the front than it is on the back. The green is our secondary color, where the blue is a bit more of the primary. So you want to make sure when you lay out your pieces, you take that into consideration. I've got my front bodice pieces laid out so they'll meet really nicely when they come together. I'm going to pin those down and trim those out. One of the biggest takeaways I want you to get from this video is that it's okay to use your own creative license. There is no right or wrong way to do something. Just do what works for you. And if what you're doing doesn't work, try something else. It's actually really empowering when you get in touch with that creative license. I know there's going to be a few people that are heartbroken that I'm cutting this bedspread. And let me tell you, I had some reservations as well. I held on to it for a really long time, hoping that I would use it as it was. And, you know, it kind of occurred to me that anything that you can use it's better if it's being used and being appreciated than just stuffed in a closet. And it didn't really work in any of my bedrooms. Not only was it the wrong size, but the texture of the fabric lends itself much better to a duster or a jacket, in my opinion, than it does a bedspread. It's pretty, and I think that it would be really nice to put on during the day, but as far as it being functional on a bed, hmm, I think I'll stick with the stuff that I have. But it makes me really happy to be able to use something like this in a way that I know I will rock and appreciate on a much more regular basis. I am kind of envisioning giving it a new life and letting others appreciate it as well. And I think in the end, that's the right choice. So where I'm cutting around the collar right now, I'm leaving a little bit of an extra seam allowance because I will probably attach on some sort of an external collar, some piece that might either be like a lapel, um, not really sure yet, or maybe I'll use some more of that fringe. I just want to give myself a little extra room to kind of attach something if I choose to. All right, so there we go. These are the last two pieces I had to cut out. Now comes the fun part, we get to attach it. All right, there you have it. This duster turned out exactly like I had envisioned. I love the fringe on the sleeves and on the bottom. I ended up adding a collar with a button just to give it a little bit something extra. And of course, a tie around the waist because it did have a lot of extra fabric. So it felt a little better to be able to cinch it and secure it. And of course, it gave me an opportunity to 
add more fringe. So this project was so fun. It took me about six hours to make and I don't know. What do you think guys? Should I make more of these? Should I offer these for sale on my website? I have a lot of vintage fabric, so I'm kind of enjoying the sewing thing. Maybe I'll make some more. Stay tuned and find out. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more DIY content. Till next time, stay curious and stay creative.